hello good morning how are you doing i hope you're very very well um thank you once again hope you're keeping on well so today we're going to be looking at chapter six and it's tied to pouring from a full cup i love this chapter right but the very foundation and basics of this chapter is you your relationship with god your relationship with yourself your growth you know making sure that you're okay like you know if you've ever traveled on the airplane the instructions are given before the flight takes off is in the case of emergency make sure that you take care of yourself before you try to help another person because a whole person can help people who are broken if you're broken most of the time and you're trying to help other people um there's every tendency that you both are gonna end up more broken than it's necessary so this is basically talking about healing making sure that you're pouring to the next generation with the right motives with the right tools that you need with the right heart and with the right understanding of what it means to truly pour out so like i said again the title is pouring from a full cup and sissy starts this chapter by basically saying that her parents taught her that it was the word of god and prayer and that they went ahead to teach all of them that it wasn't just the word and prayer because it was religion but it was the word and prayer because the word of god has solution to every circumstance that you will ever come across and she states that she did not only know this but she understood and experienced it so it was tested and proven to be true and she has remained grateful for those two things the word of god and prayer all her life praise the lord so today we're going to be looking at a few light highlights of this chapter you know um the first highlight of this chapter is being strong and whole a strong and a whole person and the, and cc actually highlights that in deuteronomy chapter 6 4 to 5 where god is talking about personal faith to the next generation for the Israelites to tell their children about what he has done he starts this by saying that he is one god he is whole god is into wholeness at every level god wants you to be whole i heard a woman of god say that two broken people you know come into a relationship it's going to be mostly a broken marriage until they figure themselves out but when two whole people understand what marriage is and come into the marriage it will be a whole marriage and that right there is the truth you know um so um she also talks about them starting their church in in nashville and they realized that their church was mostly comprised of people from broken homes people that have never seen loving families and it was more like her pastoring was like murdering people you know taking care of people for a while <laughs> you know it was like okay so this thing that god gave me and if you're here and god give you an opportunity even as a kid give you an opportunity to know some things more than other people there's not a reason for you to be proud it's a preparation that god was preparing you to help people that are not where you are to get to where you are so make sure that you're using your skills no matter how small they are to the glory of god she talks about you know healthy relationships something that is lacking in our generation and for healthy relationships to thrive people have to be whole and strong praise the lord and she talks about your heart posture you know when you do things you know your heart posture jesus says in mark 12 20, 29 to 31 right it says for us to understand that the lord our god is one right so he's whole he's not divided that's the first thing and you know to love him this whole God, to love him with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strength. And the second, to love our neighbors as ourselves, right? It's, it's very beautiful to think that, you know, God understands who he is, and he's never had to try to be anybody else. And we have to be like that. But you have to realize when you're broken to go to him, right? because he wants you to love him wholly but he knows that in our frailty in our fallen nature 
we can love him as holy as we we're supposed to so he's willing to teach us by his spirit how to love him but we're gonna have to have a right heart posture we're gonna be meek enough to acknowledge that we're broken right because if you go to the doctors and you don't know why you're going to the doctors to consult for it will be a useless venture it will not help and if you're not humble enough to even tell the doctor what you're going through you might get treated for the wrong sickness or wrong situation that might escalate into something that can even cost you your life so being real being real to examine yourself whether you're in the lord and be able to take that brokenness to the altar of the lord is an asset in christendom because your heart posture is very important to pass us faith to the next generation so you can't have a bad heart bad attitude towards people unforgiveness in your heart all the time and love god right it's impossible but he's not judging you he's not judging you no way he has sent his son according to john 3 16 he sent his son to be able to show us his love to call us into super abundant life the life that is full of love is full of god's abilities to be able to do the things that god has assigned us to do so god is not gonna judge you based on your weaknesses or your limitations he wants to help you and you have to be honest with him for for you to get the right help praise the lord hallelujah so your mental and emotional strength teach you talk about mental and emotional strength you need a healthy mental and emotional strength a very healthy one a very healthy one and what that means that is in the place of prayer that you get that in the place of intimacy with the holy spirit that you get that or it's you know speaking to a therapist god needs you whole he wants you to be whole right or speaking to a therapist or speaking to someone that can help you navigate you through that weakness that has been there you know that wouldn't judge you but will help you to become a better version of yourself either of those god loves when we're emotionally and physically strong praise the lord there's a quote that is in sis's book that i want to read it said to love god fully and pass that on to others we must constantly invite him to heal and renew our hearts our souls and our mind and this is not an easy task because we know that in john 10 10 the thief comes back to for to steal to kill and to destroy then jesus came that we may have life but jesus came that bird is amazing you know because we could have been stolen from we could have been destroyed we could have lost our lives that bird is very very important right so because of that bird we know for sure that we have god on our side and that he's made provision for a super abundant life he's made provision for super abundant life by sending his only son tc highlights also that the world is very fallen. We have fallen bodies, fallen brains, fallen chemical reactions, growing mental health crisis because of the fallen nature of man, a man seeking to depend on himself, you know, in spite of being unknowing that they are falling. Even though there's social media, there's connections on social media, there is still a high rate of mental crisis as much as there's a high rate of loneliness. Okay, the statistics from YouGov as of July 30th, 2019, it says that millennials, you know, are the primary users of social media, but they are also the loneliest. Actually, 30% of them as of 2019 felt lonely and 22% had no friends. So in this world, if you don't really know who you are, what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, you will be given to loneliness and it's the cause of so many other things that I'm not going to talk about in this video, right? So I want us to take stock, take stock, take inventory of your life. What are the things that you can work on? What are the things that you can do better at to become a better version of yourself? Actually, I had the Lord correct me once. He said a better version of yourself would not do, but a God version of yourself would do because we are gods. We are children of the most high God, right? So a God version of yourself is birthed out of the place of intimacy with the Lord. And intimacy comes with vulnerability. You have to be yourself. You have to be naked, but not ashamed in his presence you have to tell him as it is and as you feel it god is a therapist in his own right because if he can be able to make a world where there's therapies you can best believe that he's the therapist of all therapists but if it's something that you know you feel more comfortable talking to someone about it by all means do it 
God is not jealous, you know, about you getting help from other people. As long as it's genuine and it's going to make you a great version of yourself. You know, and another thing that Sissy talked about was she understood her word growing up from her family because her family, her siblings and her parents made sure that she understood that she was fearfully and wonderfully made. She was beautiful. So she never doubted her worth when she she was put on the limelight or, you know, when she was she got into the Hall of Fame. She never, ever doubted her worth. Now that is beautiful. And then... um. Romans 15 verse 13 is a scripture that she quotes and that I love. It says that, um, that may the God of all hope <laughs> fill you with joy, you know, and peace as you trust in him. And I pray that prayer for someone today. May the God of all hope fill you with all the joy and the peace that you need as you trust in him. He can be trusted. Praise the Lord. And then Sissy talks about an experience of um, being bone dry. She was a young mom with her two toddlers. She was also having to do tours and also having to do stuff, you know, as regards her career. But it was um, a trying time for her because she constantly felt like she didn't have so much to give. And then she always felt guilty when she didn't have much to give. She felt like, you know, she wasn't doing enough. She felt guilty that she didn't have things to give. And many of us are like that. You feel guilty. When you when when there's a, something in the inside of you that rises and say, hey, you know, you need to rest. You feel guilty. What will my kids do? You know, what will my husband do? Or what will my friends do? What will my job do? Uh, hey, I always say this. I said your job can run fine without you because most of the companies that we work in have been there from time immemorial, right? And they have run before you came there and they will run without you. Make sure that you're mentally and emotionally strong. It's very important, praise God. So City talks of strategies to be able to deal with stress or, you know, when you feel like you're running dry, um, she just gave four strategies on how to fight stress, how to fight being overwhelmed. The first one is be alert of the problem, um, first Peter 5, 8. The second one is pay attention to your tank level you know the light that rings in the inside of you that hey we're tired because we all know our tank level we all know when we've gotten to that point where we need to rest right the third one is develop a strategy right according to psalms 30 verse 2 the fourth one is make space for emotional healing psalms 15 13 right and um and then she goes ahead to say that we have our savior is very sympathetic according to the book of Hebrews, right? That we don't have a high priest who is not aware of our infirmities and he's willing to always help us to overcome. It says, and I'm going to read a part of this book. It says, he is our sympathetic savior and there is no condemnation in him. That's Christ. One reason why many of us don't experience emotional healing is because we are ashamed to talk about what we're going through. Yeah. So many of us walk through suffering and pain in isolation. And this can create an illusion that we are alone are the only ones having these struggles. But we're not. To get? We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. You're not alone. We need to be able to tell someone we trust that we're in a tick battle or have been wounded by past experience. Talking about our struggles, confessing our sin and applying God's truth from his word free us from shame and false guilt. Praise the Lord. Then the last part of this chapter is passing it on. Acknowledging that, you know, you need help emotionally and mentally is really, really good because um, it would help you to be able to pass on emotional wholeness to the next generation um see uh, there's another part that i really want to read in this book i'm going to read two parts and that's it for today so making sure that you're passing on wholeness and healing to the next generation is very important she said all work for our parents and grandparents wouldn't necessarily work for the younger generations when i was growing up i could receive a harsh rebuke from my parents and hear it in love but someone who grew up in abusive home could hear the same exact words and receive them as abuse it's a translation problem i think this was the heart of paul in first corinthians 9 22 to the weak i became weak to win the weak i have become all things to all people so that by all possible means i might save them it's okay to put yourself in someone's shoe especially on the altar of intercession and prayer i'm sorry about the noise baby is crying in the meantime, as we receive God's grace, we can ask for wisdom to leave a legacy of emotional wellness and help 
the next generation chat a cost to live in the excessively good abundant life jesus offers our children need to know that our god can redeem their greatest heartaches and restore their crushed spirit he is with them in suffering and his love is better than life emotional wholeness is possible but only through him praise the lord so that's what we have for today it's a bit long but i hope that you're blessed and i want to pray for you today if you are at a place where you feel so dry so empty and you're panting for water like david david says as the deer pants for the water book so my soul test after you i want you to know that god is waiting like the father of the prodigal son he's running towards you but you got to have to meet him halfway you have to let him know where you're at and trust him to be able to pull you out of it. Invite God into the mess and allow him to walk you through and out of the mess. He's able. He's able. So I pray for you actually today that the Lord will give you the grace to be able to humble yourself and be meek enough to come to him and be vulnerable. And that you're going to open up your heart for him to heal it for his close to the broken hearted. I love you and God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Give you all the praise and the glory for always. Amen. Thank you so much for listening and God bless you. Hey, don't forget that we're going to have our first prayer, 30 minutes prayer session next Sunday. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> and next Sunday, the 13th of August. I'm excited and I hope you'll be there. It'll be a live session on YouTube. Thank you all so much and bye-bye. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.